For more insight, I spoke to Remy Pierre. He is a research associate at the European Union Center at the University of Miami. I asked him first about the significance of this name change. I mean, this is a strong step forward in a conflict that started since the uh, the independence of Macedonia in 1991 after the breakout of the, the Yugos of Yugoslavia. And, and that's a, a strong conflict between Greece and Macedonia, two neighboring countries, over the name Macedonia that has links with an identity cradle lasting back almost 3,000 years with Alexander the Great. Uh, so you have ethnically, you have two different type of, of ethnies here. You have the Slavic Macedonians, which are inside the, uh, the country named Macedonia until today. And you also have the Greek Macedonian that were a region in Greece and therefore were not able to internationally claim the name Macedonia. So here the question was to try to find some kind of agreement between both Greece and Macedonia, Macedonia becoming Northern Macedonia, leaving the possibility for the Greek Macedonians to claim still the name and the heritage of uh, the Alexander the Great and the antiquity of, uh, of the history of, of Greece not feeling that it's being stolen by, uh, by their northern neighbors. Now, it also has very strong actual uh, and, and, and current uh, events linkages. Uh, until fairly recently, Greece was uh, blocking the accession of Macedonia to the European Union and to NATO because of this name issue. And also in, uh, in, in Greece, you had the extreme right movement, Golda Down, that was capitalizing on this conflict with, North, with a northern neighbor, Macedonia, to try to win some political claim and power inside Greece and derail the current government. And, but this is not official yet. Uh, what happens now? There's a process involved. Well, there was a vote inside the, uh, the parliament, Greek parliament, where the uh, extreme right movement tried to put in minority uh, the current prime minister of Greece, but that was, you know, uh, uh, unsuccessful by a fairly large me uh, measure and margin. So you, you do see uh, the, this, uh, the Parliament of Greece taking the position of agreeing to that, to that, that, uh, that name change. Uh, I, I still think I'm very optimistic to the fact that this name change that was suggested by the United Nations and by a series of countries will become effective and will allow Macedonia to be part of the larger European and, and global institutions such as the European Union and NATO. And you mentioned Macedonia's membership into NATO. Uh, how could this pave the way for that, or is that possible? Well, the, the main opposition to it was the veto from Greece, that is, the member of NATO, that they didn't want Macedonia to, jo to join until they changed their name. Uh, then after that, uh, being part of NATO is, is a process that is fairly straightforward if you don't have a veto from one of the, uh, one of the member countries. And, and it will take a couple of years, but if Macedonia actually, or now Northern Macedonia, actually uh, satisfies the series of, 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 uh, of criteria, which is the case, then they will be able to join the, uh, the, the NATO. And that will be a, a, a strong uh, signal for both market forces and other you know, political actors that Macedonia now has reached uh, the, the capacity of being part of international organization 25 years after being uh, independent and, and now can actually work uh, conjointly with that conflict with their neighbors. Again, that was Remy Pierre with the University of Miami.